Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and uh, having to resort to our phone as a backup for our broadcast this evening. Uh, just a lot of internet difficulties right now. I'm not really sure why. It was working pretty good last time we were here. Uh, we are using a temporary service there. Um, Going to go to a permanent service mainly because of the issues that we're having with the internet. But want to get right into what's happening. Of course, today being the 13th of March, I think it's the 13th of March. So let's hope it is. Uh, we'll double check here on this article here. Different mindset with Tillerson. Good chemistry with Pompeo. Uh, as you can see, there is the trouble with the internet right there. Immediately it goes out again. Um, Anyway, though, uh, Rex Tillerson has been fired by President Trump. You know, I had been a little bit suspicious of Rex Tillerson from the beginning uh, as I've seen the, the shift, the differences between Rex Tillerson and that of President Trump. Not on every issue, though, mainly on Russia. And then I also saw that Rex Tillerson was trying to be very diplomatic about North Korea. I appreciated that about him. Uh, he was trying to be more diplomatic uh, on other issues. But then I saw as he began to side with uh, Turkey, with President Erdogan, again, I got concerned. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's more like the deep state. Well, Mike Pompeo, the director of the CIA, that's nothing but deep state. What in the world has happened to Donald Trump as the president? Is he going full-blown deep state? I mean, now his cabinet is just being fully <laughs> full of people that are nothing but part of the deep state to begin with. Mike Pompeo, my gosh, I mean, I know in January he said the CIA is no deep state, but let me tell you something. The CIA, as we reported on our last several in-depth broadcasts about Syria, was the very ones that were working with President Erdogan of Turkey to smuggle the sarin gas into the nation to get it into Syria to frame President Bashar al-Assad. And now President Trump is going to make this guy the State, State Department Director? Secretary of State? Are you serious? This is like insane. You know, maybe Rex Tillerson wasn't so bad after all. Maybe when Rex Tillerson was over there working with Erdogan, maybe he was kind of forced into that situation. I don't know. I'm really, I'm really being troubled by what I'm hearing. And then we have this whole new thing as well. What comes out here? British, um, let's see, before the British outlet there. British, excuse me. Well, this, this article here says, Russia won't respond to the UK ultimatum until samples of the alleged chemical weapon received is received, according to Foreign Minister Lavrov. And unfortunately, I can't click on anything because nothing would work if I did. Uh, but this is, of course, going on something that you guys are already aware of. I did not report it as of yet because I was trying to find out a little bit more information about the alleged chemical attack that the British were accusing the Russians of, saying that they poisoned these agents, which these were actually double agents, uh, and they were saying that it was Russia's fault. Theresa May goes before the British Parliament saying that Russia had 36 hours to either admit that they did it or admit that they allowed their, their chemical weapons to get into the hands of someone else and they did it. Is there ever a possibility, Theresa May, that perhaps neither of the two apply? You know, I mean, is it not true that the British government within the last, what, 30 days said that they were preparing for war with Russia before even this alleged chemical weapons attack had happened? I mean, think about the implications of what's going on and then the justification to start a war. And a matter of fact, because I don't pull no punches here, maybe Russia knows all about that too. Maybe President Putin is playing along with the New World Order and he's going to go along with this war because after all, they have to destroy nationalism, which would be the United States and Russia, in order to bring about a New World Order. Speaking of a New World Order, have you guys been hearing about all the different embassies that are going to the going to be moved to Jerusalem, not just the United States, the Czech Republic is another one, another nation has just joined in, moving their embassies to Jerusalem. This has nothing to do with the support for the Israeli people or the Israeli government. This is all because of a new world 
order. And of course, the old city of Jerusalem will be given an international guarantee of protection while the Vatican gets hegemony over the old city. Well, guess who's going to run the new world order then? Well, maybe that makes sense why we have so many diplomats, so many heads of state that all go to the Vatican to make sure they're doing the right thing. Somebody needs to really wake up and smell the coffee, right? Very troubling indeed. Now, we find out that the British outlet will work, with, work in Russia if London shuts down, excuse me, no British ally will work in Russia if London shuts down RT, says the foreign ministry. That was uh, Maria Zakharova that spoke about that there. I don't think Britain really cares. I hate to tell you, Ms. Zakharova, but I really don't think they even give a flip. The whole point is, is that every nation in the world is against Russia. We just might as well face the facts. Be it for better or worse, they're all against Russia. And I guess it's because the, after the end of the day, they have to convince the American public and the rest of the world, not just the American public, but the European Union, that Russia is some kind of evil empire that must be destroyed. And after all, when they begin to start to start this war, uh, then they will expect the Russians to counter. And, and of course, then Britain will get exactly what Prince Philip is wanting to begin with, and that's a reduction of the population of the earth. Has anybody ever maybe even given a remote consideration to why they brought all the refugees from Africa into Europe? Is it possible that really what's going on, and of course the United States, China, uh, Russia, and all these other countries are trying to get the land down in Africa? Why? They're, they know that they're going to do a, a, a semi-annihilation of the Northern Hemisphere with nuclear weapons. So therefore, all the elites need to have somewhere to go south of the equator. That way that their weather patterns don't get mixed up with the weather patterns in the northern part of the equator. Would be kind of ironic if some of those nuclear bombs ended up landing in the southern hemisphere rather than just the northern hemisphere, wouldn't it? Anyway, that's part of the New World Order plan, and I guess I'll wait for it to cool off up here, if it ever does, in order to start things over again. But until then... They're sending all the Africans from, uh, south, so from Africa, making it look like that there's a better life here. And if you ever notice, it's only men they're sending. They're making sure that there's no one that could fight or resist their plans in Africa. So they send all the refugees from Africa to Europe. And of course, the Pope opens his door like it's no big deal. Why? Because he's going to be sitting down there where he's a little bit safer. Hmm. I think they're setting up the people for a mass extermination, and they're doing it intentionally. So no, to the Arabic refugees that have come here and to the African refugees that have come to Europe for a better way of life, it's not that at all. I think there is a plot and a plan for everyone, and they don't really care about any of us, whether we are refugees or not. I guess we're considered the undesirables. Who really knows? Anyway. So the whole issue comes down, though, this huge spying thing. Mike Pompeo becomes uh, the Secretary of State now. Uh, Rex Tillerson is on his way out the door. I guess there will be no uh, peace with North Korea after all. In fact, Tillerson's the only one that really worked with that. Tillerson was even against uh, trying to, to close the Iran deal, trying to keep the Iran deal alive. He believed that there were some good aspects to it, but President Trump is no. And I can understand why President Trump is no. I know Israel never liked it. Prime Minister Netanyahu did not like it. But yet at the same time, it's some kind of a deal. And of course, really and truly, they have to have it not be good because they need a war with Iran. Don't forget, you know, former General Wesley Clark did say that Iran was the last one to take off the map. They got to wipe off all these Arab nations in the Middle East for the Greater Babylonian Project, of course. Uh, anyway, guys, just as soon as we can get some internet working here, can't wait to share with you some more in-depth uh, news and studies that we're looking at. I'm sure it'll be a blessing to many of you. Uh, but until then, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for standing up with us here at Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.